Hello, Mark Satterfield here. Thanks so much for joining me. I want to talk uh, today about marketing to the affluent and realistically, how can we go about getting more new uh, high net worth clients? Now, maybe you disagree with me, but I'm just not a big believer that you can actually sell the affluent on buying your goods and services. If for no other reason than the fact that the affluent have all sorts of choices. They can pretty much buy anything they want from whomever they want. So the idea that you, through some sort of magical, charismatic sales process, are going to be able to, quote unquote, sell the affluent more effectively by doing one thing versus another, I think that's just kind of ridiculous. Look, there are a couple of different strategies that work really well in marketing to the affluent. And, and I tell you this just based on having been doing this for 30 years for clients in over two dozen niche industries that uh, market their products and services to, uh, to the wealthy. This is pretty much all we've been doing uh, for the last 30 years. So, you know, we've got a pretty good sense of what works and most importantly, what doesn't work. So. One of the big components in terms of marketing products and services to the affluent hinges on referrals. Well, yeah, I mean, that's to a certain extent kind of a blinding grasp of the obvious. But the question becomes exactly how can we get more referrals? How can we increase referrals, not only from the affluent themselves, but second of all, from those that are their trusted advisors? And what I'd like to do today is to share with you two strategies for, for doing that. The first is, one, you have to be visible. You have to be where the affluent are. You can't do this just online. You can't do this just through direct mail. You can't do this just through marketing uh, in a uh, one-off or hands-off uh, approach. You've really got to be visible. You've got to be where they are. So where are they? Well, it is the uh, you know it, it it's the charity circuit uh, in Atlanta, where Marion and I lived for thirty years. There was a very defined season uh, around charitable events, and if you wanted to interact with the affluent, that's where you went. Where else? Well, I mean, it the the list is pretty well known, but it is art gallery openings. It is. Uh, uh, the symphony, it is the theater, it is the places that you kind of probably already know this is where the affluent are going. Uh, but the question that you then have to ask yourself is, are you there? Uh, no, I don't want to go there. It takes too much time. No, I don't want to go there. I got to buy a ticket. I mean, okay, look at those are all the excuses. And yes, I get that. But realistically, uh, if you want more referrals, you have to get to know them. You have to be in their environment. They have to kind of size you up as somebody that is their kind of person or not. So, Think about, okay, where are, are the affluent? And they're always in certain clusters. They do hang out together. Where are those people? If you want to brainstorm about where they are in your particular community, click on the box uh, that's uh, below this, uh, the, this video and we can set up a time to chat. Okay, so that's number one. And uh, again, you know, nothing earth shattering, nothing, uh, you know, that you probably haven't heard before, but really the admonition is today, well, go out and do it, especially as we're heading into fall and that's the prime, prime season. So the second thing that I would suggest to you is that the affluent want to do business with the people who are best in their particular area. Uh, in other words, they want to do business with those that are recognized experts in their field. So you've got to become that recognized expert. You know, it's just not going to be enough to do good work. That's kind of a given, but if you really are focused on wanting to increase your business, increase the number of affluent clients you have and the number of referrals that you get. Because keep in mind, this is a game of numbers. Most people 
that you are doing business with, most people that you know are not going to refer you anybody. So you have to cast a very wide net, at least in the beginning, until you kind of reach this critical mass. So you've got, one of the things that you really need to do is you need to become this recognized expert. And how do you do that? Well, you've heard me say it before, and I'm going to say it again, you need to write a book. There is something about writing a book that separates you from everyone else who talks a good game but hasn't written the book. So you need to write a book. And when I talk about writing a book, I'm not talking about your PDF lead magnet. Yes, you need those, but that's something different. And ideally, what we're talking about is a book that is published aside from someone aside from yourself. You know, the, the problem is that since pretty much anybody can publish a book using Amazon or any of the other uh, self-publishing services, there's no vetting process. There's, you know, there's, there, there's nobody who is saying, okay, this book passes a certain level of muster. Now, writing a book that you self-publish, is it better than, than nothing? Absolutely. And are there cases where somebody has become a nationally recognized expert through a self-published book? Absolutely as well. But here's the, here's the tricky part, is because writing the book is not enough. You've got to promote it. And to be able to promote it, to get, your, uh, to get the book reviewed and to get people talking about it in, um, uh, in the media sites that you want, in the online and offline publications, they get inundated with people who have written books. So they, as a shorthand process, have a, they tend to have policies where they're only going to look at books that are published by a mainstream publisher. Now, there are certainly exceptions to that. And you can start off writing a book that's self-published and then actually go out and get a contract for it with, uh, with a mainstream, mainstream publisher. But the key is you really do need to write a book and then you need to budget some money in terms of promoting it, getting that word out both in terms of you know, the larger media as well as highly focused. So for example, when I wrote the one week marketing plan, uh, and uh, my, uh, my publisher did a really great job with that, but it was up to me to promote it. And the strategy for promoting it was twofold. One were the large mainstream publications. So we wanted to get visibility in the Wall Street Journal and uh, Fast Company and the Financial Times and a number of other very large general purpose business publications. And we were successful in that. But we also wanted to have a micro approach where we said, okay, look at here are the two dozen niche industries that uh, we uh, that we do business with. Uh, what are the trade publications they read? What are the blogs they read? What are the uh, uh, who are the influencers in those particular uh, niche industries? And we reached out to them, and as a result, the book was really really successful. Got a lot of uh, visibility, did really well for us from, from a business standpoint. Again, the strategy isn't that complicated, but it does require an awful lot of good, hard work, as does anything. Look, everybody wants to do business with the affluent. Uh, if you're a financial advisor, if you're a wealth manager, if you run an airline leasing company, if you've got a startup that you're looking for accredited investors, look, the list goes on and on and on. The affluent get barraged by people who want to do business with them. So they are very selective, and one of the things that they use as a huge criteria is is, is this an A-level player? Is this someone who's a real recognized expert in their particular field? And the shorthand to determine that is, did they, did they write a book? Have I heard about them? So those are the two things that I'm going to leave you with today. One, you need to be where the affluent are. So you think about your community. Now, I look, I live in Pinehurst, North Carolina. This is not a particularly big community, but it has a substantial pocket of very wealthy people. And, you know, they go to things like the forum. They go to certain events. And, you know, if you're in a Pinehurst-like community, there's not going to be a huge number of places you go. But where those places are, you need to be there. There. And then second of all, you need to become that recognized expert in the field. You need to write the book. 
Uh, so hope this is uh, helpful to you. Uh, hope it gives you some good food for thought. As always, if you'd like to uh, talk and apologize for the phone interruption, uh, there's a button below this uh, video and uh, uh, you can uh, you can arrange that. So as always, uh, really appreciate you being a part of my community. This is Mark Satterfield. Bye for now.